I don't know of any reason why it would be running up quickly. What I'm gonna do with this stock is, all right, welcome to Talking Investing. I am Tom, this is not financial advice. We are here to talk about all things investing. And in this video, I wanna to talk to you about a company named Workhorse, stock ticker WKHS. I just wanna talk about a few things and follow up from a video I did after their last quarterly release about a month or a month and a half ago. What I'd like to hit in today's video is talk about a press release that they put out on Wednesday, September 15th. And then I wanna talk about a segment of their business that I have not talked about yet. And then I wanna go through the chart and take a look at where we're at and, and see where I think that this stock is going. So let's start out with this press release that they put out on Wednesday, September 15th. This was a pretty routine press release or so it would seem. Most people I think either dismissed it or they thought it was bad news. And I actually have the exact opposite opinion. I think that this is very good news. This is something that I was waiting for and I actually called it out in my last video that I hoped that they would do this. So I just wanna show a quick clip from my last video and then I'm going to get into the press release. So I thought it was highly notable that the new CEO Rick Dauk did not even mention the USPS contract while he was talking. Now there was a question in the question and answer section and somebody asked him a question about it. He basically said we have no comment. I'm much more comfortable with that position. To have a quarterly call and talk about all the things they can do versus obsessing over the one thing that it seems like they probably can't do was a much healthier stance. So that is another thing that I think really instilled confidence in the marketplace. Okay, so those were my thoughts on the USPS contract and the lawsuit regarding it. So it looked like management was headed in the right direction, and now they've put out this release. Workhorse Group announces withdrawal of USPS bid protest. I'm just gonna read a few key sections from this release. Workhorse today announced that it has withdrawn its United States Postal Service bid protest complaint filed in the United States Court of Federal Claims. So the last sentence that I wanna read is very important. This again is Rick Dauk and he's saying, the federal government has announced its intention to replace its fleet with electrical vehicles. And we believe that the best way for us to work with any governmental agency is through cooperation, not through litigation. By withdrawing our protest, we can also better focus our time and resources on initiatives that we expect will be more productive for our company. So, this was just exactly what I was looking for. There is a lot of business out there for these guys to get. And in addition to that, like he just said, their best path to getting a part of this USPS as well as other government contracts is not by suing the federal government. It's by cooperating, it's by improving their technology and by showing that they have a better product than the competitor does, which I do believe they have. So that press release came out this week, basically at the last quarterly conference call, the CEO, Rick Dauk, said he wasn't really going to give a lot of information in between now and the time they release the next quarterly earnings. He had just started. He was brand new. I think he'd been there a week or two. So he really wanted to dig in, figure out what was going on, and get some real information before he just started throwing press releases out there. So they've been very selective in the information that they've released since then, which is okay because they gave us a heads up that that's exactly what they were going to do. So I would not expect another press release prior to the next quarterly earnings results unless there's something major for them to announce. So they did have an issue they were working on with their vehicle. It seemed very manageable. They explained it in the last quarterly call. I explained it in detail in my last video, so you can check that out if you're interested. But I don't believe it's anything that's gonna slow the company down. So to me, I think management, based on this press release and what I heard at the last quarterly call, it seems like they are moving in the right direction and they are focusing on the right things. Now I wanna discuss a part of their business that I have not yet talked about. And it is drones. So I have been a skeptic on the entire drone concept from a delivery standpoint. As many of you may know, they've been talking about using drones for delivery of packages for several years now. And at this point in time, it really has not happened. Amazon, for instance, talked a few years ago about delivering their Christmas packages via drone. 
But that did not happen, and it still has not happened. I have been highly skeptical because I think the logistics of delivering tens or hundreds of millions of packages via drones is not feasible. However, Workhorse, I think, has found a solution to that problem that makes a lot of sense, and I think this solution will allow companies to utilize drones in the delivery of packages. Their solution is actually an integrated vehicle that has the drones on the vehicle. So I'm gonna run through it real quickly on the website and show you a quick video clip of a demonstration and then we'll talk about it. Okay, the Horsefly Unmanned Aerial Vehicle, UAV. It's a custom-built high-efficiency delivery UAV that is fully integrated with our line of electric delivery trucks. So that is crucial. This is an entire system. So they're, they're providing the drone, they're providing the delivery truck, they're integrating that with hardware and software so that the packages can be monitored by them. The packages can also be monitored by the customers that they're being delivered to. So this is a turnkey solution. And basically what they're talking about, instead of flying drones from the warehouse, you know, 10 miles or 20 miles or 50 miles away, what they will do is load a vehicle up with packages. The drones are integrated into the vehicle. The vehicle can do 90% of the driving. What the drones can do is that last five or 10% of the delivery from a fixed point where the vehicle is, the drones can take off throughout a neighborhood or actually about a 10 mile radius, I think is what these drones are capable of. So that will allow one driver to be delivering many packages at the same time. It will also cut down the amount of time that drones would be in the air by, in my estimation, somewhere between 90 to 95% versus releasing drones from a distribution center and delivering packages to customers. By that massive reduction in the amount of airtime that the drones are required to have, it makes the drones much, much more feasible. This is a system that they have tested. They have been working with the FAA. I think they've gone through 45 tests. They passed each test on their first try. So this system works. And I think it's going to be a big part of their future. So if you look at the specifications real quickly, it's about 23 pounds. The payload capacity is about 10 pounds and its maximum speed is about 40 knots, which is just under 50 miles an hour. So you can see the flight time is 25 minutes with the payload included. So, you know, at 40 or 50 miles an hour in 25 minutes, it's pretty easy to deliver a package 10 or 15 miles away. And I think most of them will be significantly closer than that. This is more than capable of being the last mile of the last mile delivery service. And that is what I think they're looking for. So this is a gigantic space. They expect that about 35% of all packages will be delivered via drones by the year 2030. I don't know if that's true. Again, this is still in its infancy, but these guys seem to be at the forefront of it. They seem to have found a much better solution by attaching the drones to the vans. So let's just take a quick look at the video so that you can see this thing in action. Today, you may be ordering a prescription on a mail order pharmacy, which may take three to four days. Tomorrow, you would order it, and within 30 minutes, it's at your front door. That is the future of delivery we are talking about. Okay, so what you just saw there was a UPS truck actually using this system. This is Workhorse's system that you just saw. And, you, and that was UPS demonstrating the delivery of a package. So that's what it would look like as a practical application actually being used. So we can see what it is. Uh, the customers would also have an app on their phone where they could actually pinpoint the exact spot on their property where they want the package to be delivered. They can also follow the delivery of their package and view, that's the drones. I'm excited about the drones. Obviously none of their sales at this point include this system, but this will be rolled out I think in 2022 and obviously become a larger and larger part of their overall business going forward. That's the drone section. Let's take a quick look at the chart. Okay, I've zoomed in more closely so that you can see some more relevant lines of support and resistance here over the last 
few months. As an aside, we're almost at 3,000 subscribers. Please do us a favor and subscribe to the channel, smash the like button, and hit the notification bell so you never miss a video. This is the last three months of trading for Workhorse. In this area right here where I've drawn the circle, they got rid of their CEO, they did their second quarter earnings call, and from there, you can see that the stock kind of went straight downhill. It looked like it was finding support right here, and it ran back up to this $10.70 line. That proved to be resistance, and it's been trending downwards ever since. Now, it did seem to land here. I've drawn a blue line at $8. That line goes back to this point right here on May 25th. So that was quite some time ago. So I think it has leveled off and it has found some support right there. The $8 line seems to be holding. There is a line right below it. It's at $6.95. That's a little longer term support. So call it $7. So this is kind of a almost a seven, eight, nine here. I don't think the $7 line is gonna come into play at all. I think the bad news has already been priced into this stock. I believe there's good news going forward. Now, I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know if they're gonna solve their problem. I don't know when they're gonna solve their problem, but it seems likely to me that this company is gonna have some good news to report sometime in the next 90 days. They have a very big backlog right now, so really what they need to do is put some finishing touches on their vehicle so that it meets the specifications of what their customers want. So I'm expecting that to happen sooner than later. If that can happen and they can have a press release that they have some manufacturing coming back online and some deliveries, some new orders, or, you know, if they have some good news to report in the next quarterly conference call, I'm expecting this stock to start trending back upwards. However, this is, for me, a long-term buy and hold. I don't see an immediate catalyst. I don't know of any reason why it would be running up quickly. What I'm going to do with this stock is if it continues to consolidate here at the $8, I have already added to my position. And as for as long as it's safely staying above the $8 line, I would continue to add to this position. I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know if this is going up or down in the next 30 days. I believe in the next six months... 12 months, 24 months, I believe this stock is going back up. So that's my update on Workhorse. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.